This is why it's better to have one friend that you hang out with regularly instead of having a big group of friends. And trust me, you're going to want to listen to this story time. So when I was a sophomore in high school, I was kind of going through an identity crisis and low-key still am. I went to a predominantly white school for the majority of my life. So let's just say I was extremely whitewashed. It was one of those times in my life where if a white person said the n-word around me, I would just laugh. Not because I didn't know it was wrong, but because I wanted to be accepted and I wanted to be like everybody else and I seeked validation. Sophomore year was really when I started to become who I am today. I wanted to learn way more about my culture and my background. So I started started becoming friends with people from other schools that are more diverse. Eventually I met this group of girls and I thought these girls were going to be the sweetest girls I would ever meet. Now this friend group was serving flavor. I'm talking diverse to the T. One night we decided that we were going to spend the night at one of the girls houses. Let's call this girl Sally. I kept getting lost on the way to Sally's house and I thought it was because I didn't know the area that well. Keep in mind that's what I thought was the reason. I get there and we watch like four or five movies before I end up falling asleep. And when I wake up I was in a room full of grown ass men staring at me. Story time part two of why it's better to have one loyal friend instead of a big group of friends. I forgot to mention in part one that when I arrived the men were already there. Mind you we were in sophomore year these men looked like they were in college. So I was already a little thrown off but I trusted it because I was with my friend. When I wake up these men are like staring at me but they try to look away really fast but I could tell that they were staring at me. I start thinking the worst of the worst. I try to think of any possible way that I could get out of there whether it was physically or mentally. So I pretend to fall asleep just to escape the reality of it. But then one of the men at the bottom of the bed starts rubbing my feet. I immediately kick my leg so I can get his hands off. Now I'm thinking he's gonna be mad and I'm gonna get fucking attacked. So I try to make small talk to loosen the tension. So I look at the guys and I'm like, hey, do you know where the girls went? One of them looks at me and says, oh, they went home. So I'm like, um, I thought this was Sally's house. And they say nothing. So at this point, I think I'm being set up. I try my best to not make it seem like I'm suspicious of them. I casually act like I need to pee. Walk into the bathroom and I see a window. Automatically something clicks in my mind. Get the fuck out of there. Making part three right now. Part three of why you should have one loyal friend instead of hanging out with a big group of friends. So I go into the bathroom and there's a window. I'm thinking to myself, I would be so dumb. I would be so extremely incredibly stupid to go back into that room full of grown ass men that I've never met before. Instead of making my escape through that window right here, right now. So I trusted my gut and I got the fuck out of there. Mind you, I'm in my PJs right now. No no shoes no socks i'm making my great escape call me pablo escobar while i was doing all of it i was in disbelief like i cannot believe that i'm escaping like right now like that's this is actually insane like i did what i believed was right at the moment and honestly that decision might be the reason why i'm alive right now so i make a run for it i immediately run to the front of the neighborhood i hide behind some trees and then i call my sister i call my sister instead of my parents because my mom was the one who drove me there and if she knew that something bad happened she wouldn't have let me go out again i'm frantically explaining everything on the phone to my sister she literally speeds to come get me once she gets there i immediately hop in her car and we get the fuck out of there on our way home i get a text from sally last part is part four i'm making that right now part four of why you should have one loyal friend instead of having a big group of friends so i'm on my way home and i get a text from sally hey girl where are you we went to the gas station to get some milkshakes you could have came with but you were already asleep I didn't even respond. I just blocked all of them because I know damn well that they were not getting milkshakes. Because one, why didn't they wake me up to get milkshakes? Because I wasn't the first person to fall asleep. I'd never fall asleep first at somebody's house with a big group of people. I saw somebody else who looked like they were sleeping, so I thought that I was going to fall asleep too. Two, why were all those grown ass men there? Nobody told me that they were going to be there. Like I said, we were sophomores. These men were in college. Maybe even graduated from college. They were grown. Three, why would she lie about it being her house? Four, why did the boy say she went home? I remember when I said I kept getting lost because I didn't know the area. Once I went back to look through the messages that I had with those girls to see if there was anything fishy going on, I noticed that they were all sending me different addresses. Either one number would be off or a letter would be off. They definitely were planning something because they were trying to get me there late. I haven't seen or talked to those girls since then. Okay, quick story time since I still have my makeup on. Let me tell you about this old lady that tried to fight me at Walmart. PSA to this old lady, if you're watching this, you could still get slapped any day. I don't like you and I'm willing to fight still. Waiting for you to try it the second time. Anyways, let's get into it. I was at Walmart with my sister because I go everywhere with my sister. We were just looking for a hair accessory. Because you know at Walmart sometimes they have those hidden gem items that you probably never thought would be there but they're there and it's really cheap. So we go there to look for some cute hair accessories. I would just like to clarify that this old lady was white and I had a blonde wig on. Yeah, this old lady pulls up on us and she's like, hmm, one thing about me is I hate when people stare at me. What are you staring at? Do you need help? if you want to suck a little pussy just fight it anyways you know what i mean like it's just mad judgmental i feel like people are judging me so i'm like can i help you he goes can i touch your hair obviously i say no because who is this old white lady trying to touch me don't know you don't know where you've been like stay away six feet i don't know what it is about the people that live around me being so bold i say no you cannot touch my hair and she reaches her old wrinkly hands next thing you know she's tugging on my hair it's part two right now the time an old lady tried to fight me at walmart part two so i thought that she was just gonna feel my hair no she takes her hand and starts tugging and i'm like what the fuck is 
this bitch doing? She's talking to my hair. I'm like, can you like not fucking touch me? So like I move my head so then she can like let go. And she goes, fake. My sister steps in and she's like, you're not about to touch my sister like that. And you're not about to come up to us as an old white lady and pull our hair so you can see if it's fake or not. And she's like, that's the problem these days. You black people don't know how to love yourself. This lady was looking for a fight. I was ready to fight. Something about me and my sister, we do not let nobody disrespect us. Your old, black, white, short, four-year-old, we will get on your ass. So we like, hold on, you're not about to walk up to us and disrespect us, our space and our bubble and our privacy. You're not about to come up to us and try to pick an argument with us. Old as she is, I'm surprised she didn't have a heart attack. There was a worker really close by, so they came and was like, okay, what's going on? I was like, before I put this old white lady in her grave, her have an early funeral, you better get her. As she was walking away, she was saying all types of racial slurs. Me and my sister did not give one fuck and went about our day period story time at the time i dated a married man and his wife walked in on us mind you i am 17 child I promise it will all make sense at the end just keep watching this literally happened in june i turned 17 in may i had just turned 17 it just makes everything worse let's just get into it but at this time my tiktok page was like plummeting was after i exposed my racist school and i started getting all those death threats i basically had to stay off tiktok for a while and social media in general so i wasn't really getting a lot of notice from anyone but one day i noticed that this guy was liking all of my videos and let me tell you this man <laughs> This man was extra fine. So I was like, let me go ahead and shoot my shot. Honestly, if anyone were to blow up my notice like that, I'd probably follow them anyway. So I followed him. Uh, worst mistake of my life. The thing though is he only had a profile picture, but he did have a video. In the video, he was using a filter, so his face was covered up. But his hair and his bone structure matched his profile picture. So I was like, okay, this is him. I'm not gonna get catfish. Everything is good right anyway so he dms me on tiktok he gives me his number I text him and we start talking he tells me that he's 19 wait until you find out his actual age part two part two of the time i dated a married man and his wife walked in on us so yeah he tells me that he's 19 i'm 17 so i was thinking it's only two years and we're both at a very mature age i was like okay that's fine so we start talking more and we click like this i really thought that i found the one for me we had the same personality same humor we we're interested in the same things i had been single for 17 years so i was excited we keep talking and we plan to hang out one day he said he wanted to take me out on a little date or whatever i was like free food <laughs> Say fuck the Liz. So he comes to pick me up and we go out to a restaurant. Everything's good. I go home. Everything's fine. After that, we plan to hang out again and we go on another date. Everything's good. Everything's fine. Get home safely and I think everything's going good. But things start to get a little weird because the more as time went on, the more we would text and the more we would call. He started to randomly hang up when we were on FaceTime or he would randomly put me on mute or he would talk really quiet. I would ask him like why he was doing that and he would say, oh, my phone is glitching. He being a dumb bitch, I believed it. I was like, you know what? All men aren't trash. Let me give him a chance. We continue to hang out. We hang out like four or five times until the night his wife came home part three of the time i dated a married man and his wife walked in on us okay so since everything's going good we continue to go on dates we go on three or four dates and the last time we hung out was at his house I was kind of confused on how he had a house at 19 but he said that he had a family business that he invested in that's how he made his money so he basically had his life set up for him so i'm thinking child oh he got money he's cute he has a nice personality he's sweet like what could go wrong Here's what went wrong. So like I said, the last time we hung out was at his house. We're at his house, everything's good. We're watching a movie and a knock on the door. It's like, okay, it's probably just like, I don't know, delivery. He's gonna tell me, go in that room. Like trying to rush me, like go, 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 go in that room, go in that room. Obviously something fishy is going on here if he's trying to rush me to hide. So I'm like, uh-uh, what's going on? His wife, who is the one who was knocking on the door, heard my voice and starts yelling. So now I'm like, what did I just get myself into? I am not trying to fight nobody today. I'm definitely not gonna fight over no boy. So I'm just looking at him like, you got some explaining to do. So he goes and opens the door for his wife. And this is what happened. Story time at the time I dated a married man and his wife walked in on us. So I'm at his house and his wife knocks on the door. She's yelling, she's clearly mad. And I'm like, I am not about to get beat up. I have to defend myself. Cause we all know those girls that get mad at the girl that their boyfriend cheats on them with instead of getting mad at the boyfriend. So I had to prepare myself, I put my shoes on, I had some rings in my purse, I put those on. I was ready to fight thinking I was gonna get attacked. So I had to defend myself. Yeah, so he goes to open the door for his wife. She walks in and stares dead at me. And I'm just like, like the most awkwardest thing ever. She looks at him and screams, you have kids. At that point, I was ready to go because I know I just got catfish. She starts going off on him and I have really bad anxiety, so I zone out. And she looks at me and she goes, who the hell are you? I snap back and I'm like, I'm 17. I don't know what's going on. I don't, know. I don't want any part of this. I'm so fucking scared. I just wanted to get out of there. It's like, I did not know. I will leave right now. Well, I left. I called a friend to come get me because he's the one who drove me to his house. I don't know what happened with them, but I received this text message an hour later from his phone. Part five of the time I dated a married man and his wife walked in on us. So after I received that text message from her, here it is again. 
texted her back and she blocked me right after I forgot to add that in the last part when she came in and started yelling and then she looked at me and she was like who the hell are you i just automatically screamed my age because i was so scared she was like stop lying to me because this man is damn near 30 I don't know his exact age but he's around 30 years old this means i had just turned 17 i was going on dates and hanging out with a man who was damn near 30 years old the whole entire time i was thinking that he was 19 i guess nowadays you really cannot tell people's age someone could be 16 looking 25 it could be damn near 30 looking 19 and the most disgusting part of all of this is the fact that the whole entire time he knew that i was 17 the time my crazy neighbor tried to go on a killing spree in our neighborhood this wasn't no average killing spree dude had a whole rifle he was going into people's backyard jumping fences literally trying to break into people's homes just get ready for the story time so i don't exactly remember when this happened it happened a few years ago when i was still in high school because i just graduated this year and i know that another one of my friends that went to that school and lives in this same neighborhood saw him in their backyard so this guy was literally our next door neighbor i've lived in the same neighborhood since fourth grade and he was here when we moved here him and my dad honestly had a really good bond if one of them needed a lawn mower they would let them borrow it and i was even in band at one point and i was selling butter braids because they do it for a fundraiser and he bought several of my butter braids i got hella chain i genuinely thought this man was kind-hearted until this night i was chilling in my room and all of a sudden i see a light flashing through my window obviously i go to check it out and it's police several police one of them waves their hand like this trying to get me to close the blind so i do and go tell my family what i just saw and we hear a knock on the door thinking it's police we go to open the door it's our crazy neighbor with a rifle he tells us that he saw a rifle at his feet at this point i'm thinking child i know this man did not just knock on our door to hide a gun then we could open the door and he could shoot us right oh hell no it's time to evacuate i should call the police instead but while one of my family members was on the phone with the dispatcher he heard another knock on the door this time it followed up with them announcing that they were the police the police officer was shaking he said we needed to evacuate immediately because our crazy neighbor was in our backyard trying to break in part three of the time my crazy neighbor tried to go on a killing spree in our neighborhood the police knock on our door and tell us that we have to evacuate because our crazy neighbor is now in our backyard trying to break into our house so this means that he was still on our property after we closed the door on him literally went to our backyard after we slammed the door in his face and was trying to figure out a way to get in through the back who the fuck do you expect to let you in their house if you have a rifle understand that he was trying to hide it but he was not doing a very good job okay so we frantically start packing we hear yelling outside we hear dogs barking the police basically had him cornered in our backyard so we had to get out of there as quickly and safely as possible so we have police surrounding our house we all finish packing and go inside our garage so we can get out from there because it's safer there were literal police cars following us all the way to the hotel once we got into the hotel they told us that they were going to call us when we were good to go back home we only stayed at that hotel for one night and once they call us the next morning to tell us that we we're good to go back home my dad asks them exactly what happened apparently that night there was two boys across the street playing basketball it was really late at night and he was extremely tired and he had work the next day he kindly came out and asked the boys to be quiet they kept being loud and it only went downhill from there
of what happened to Aeroflight 593. 16-year-old Eldar is in the pilot seat of Aeroflight 593 while it's in the air after being given permission from his father, Yaroslav, who was a pilot on the plane. Eldar accidentally disconnects the autopilot and is now actually in control of flying the plane, which has 75 occupants in total. Yaroslav was completely distracted, so he didn't notice anything was wrong until Eldar asked, why is the plane turning? In which Yaroslav responds, is it turning itself? Eldar responds, yes. The plane is now at a sharp 90 degree angle and it keeps turning every second. At this point, Yaroslav should have immediately removed his son from the pilot seat and took control of the aircraft, but he didn't. He just stood over Eldar in the pilot seat, looking at the controls, trying to figure out what's wrong. Before they know it, the plane is going down at about 40,000 feet per minute. But the plane is going down at an angle. They're almost upside down. It's like going down the hill of a roller coaster, so they're being pinned back to their seats. Because of the amount of pressure from the plane going down, pinning everyone back to their seats, Eldar is unable to get out of the pilot seat. Part 4 of what happened to Aeroflight 593. Now, all Yaroslav can do is yell demands at his 16-year-old son who has no knowledge on flying an airplane so he can try and get the plane back on course before they all crash and die. The plane is being flipped in all different directions, upside down, on its side. The passengers are being tossed around like Caesar salad. Make sure to watch my Instagram story for the full animation and real audio recording. But I do warn you guys, it is very unsettling. Eventually, Yaroslav was able to get Elder out of the seat and take control, but it was too late. The plane lost too much altitude and was flying too low and crashed into some mountains. There were no survivors. And what makes this even worse is that they were only 8 minutes away from their destination. After further investigation, they found that all Elder had to do to keep the plane from going down was let go of the control handle and the autopilot would have reconnected itself and set the plane back on course. I met this boy on the BLK app. Let's get ready for this date. He's taking me out for dinner and a movie, so I'm going to try to wear something cute and casual. Nothing too fancy because we're not going to a fancy restaurant or anything. I should probably put my hair up. We back. Honestly, I'm not going to lie to y'all. I'm a little nervous because he's really cute and he's really tall. Ooh. But I'm also excited because we have a lot of the same interests. Can you come out? We listen to the same kind of music and we relate to a lot of personal things like our beliefs and our values, like the way that we think. I met him on this app called BLK. I think you guys should download it because there's a lot of fine people on there. Like me. <laughs> not too much, not too much. This is what I look like on my profile, so we gotta try and look like her. With her fine self. Oh, ain't she just so fine? I'm gonna finish my makeup off camera and I'll be back. Makeup's done, time to get dressed. Okay, so this is the outfit. I've been really into gray colors lately. And I put this jacket on because I think it looks really cute with the jacket. He's here, so it's time to go. Did I just spend $600 on some headphones? Yes, I did. Don't ask me why I bought it. It's my own motherfucking money. Shut up. It's retail therapy. I don't have any friends, but I got money. So I'm gonna spend it. Please excuse my ghetto setup. I don't have one of them aesthetic backgrounds right now. Oh, it's supposed to go this way. Okay. I love Apple boxes. I'm gonna keep this. Like, I'm not even gonna throw it away. Okay, the moment of truth. Oh my God. I love the packaging so much. I'm obsessed, actually. I feel like everyone thinks the green ones are ugly, but I think they're so cute. I feel like it looks better than any of the other colors. The case is not very protective, I'll tell you that. They clack together, and so I'm gonna have to buy one of those, like, clear cases that go over the metal part. Let's do some ASMR. Yo, you cannot hear shit. Hello? 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 Oh my gosh. I'm gonna connect it to my iPad and play some music. We gonna play some Onika Mirage. You wanna F R E. Wait a damn minute. Oh, this shit feel like I am Nicki Minaj. Like I'm the one rapping. I feel like it's a 10 out of 10. I really like it.